I took one of our standard assignments from our English 102 course, which is an archival research project. And in the past, instructors have done this in a variety of fashions, taken students to museums, used our university's library special collections, um, done a variety of things to get students engaged in primary source research and archival research. What I did was I went to partner with our museum that's on our campus. We have uh, the McClung Museum resides on our campus. And I went to our McClung Museum and said, you know, can we collaborate and create something um, really exciting, hopefully, for our instructors and our students. So what we ended up doing was reimagining that archival, archival research project as a virtual museum exhibit project that our students would complete in their English 102 course. And so I partnered with uh, the academic curator at the McClung Museum to build a fully complete course module for this project that enabled our students and our instructors to do primary source research, to engage in some of the object document um, analysis and create then a digital, fully online museum project that showcased their analysis and the work that they had done. So my name is Katie Malone. I'm the curator of academic programs at the McClung Museum of Natural History and Culture here at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville which means that I liaise between faculty and staff and the museum, and I also provide um, access to our collections and our research expertise for the campus. So for an instructor, when they're utilizing an object, it's really important to realize that an object can tell many, many stories, and that the stories held within an object are in part you know, how it was made, its history, its very existence, how it was utilized. I mean, very few objects were actually created to live in a museum space or live in a collection. They were made to live out in the world. So telling those stories is really a fascinating way to contextualize the world around us. And I think for instructors, um, especially those who are very literary, it's really important to learn how to read an object just as you would learn how to read a text and to look at the object for its history and try to, you know, without sounding a little too um, metaphysical or something, try to read and see what the object has to tell you. And I think that interaction is really important. So when I guide people into reading an object, what I start off with is I have them look very closely at the object and spend time with that, without even necessarily um, giving them any context for the item itself. Because sometimes the object will be able to tell you quite a bit more when you analyze the surface, the materiality, the weight, the uh, wear and tear, the existence, before you even start to put in things like when it was made, what it's made out of, who made it, and who used it. So spending time doing that slow looking exercise and then adding the details later kind of allows you to trust your instincts when you're reading an object. Writing is the single most important part of curating anything um, in a museum space. So writing is um, a critical part of the work we do with objects. And the type of writing that is done in a curatorial arena is different than in other arenas, though not certainly not unique, right? It's um, more, it's more spare. It's more concise. You often have to be very tight with your word choice because you, at least in a curatorial round, you have less room for writing than you do, say, in an academic paper or an essay. You have to be really focused on what you're telling about the story. And within that, you usually um, have to narrow what your perspective is when dealing with an object. Because like I said, any single object can tell hundreds of stories, but you have to narrow it down to the one or two points that you want to make to tell your story. So that precision is really critical, and I think that uh, people underestimate how hard that is. <laughs>